What's cracking everyone? It's Venom Mystera back with another StarCraft 2 strategy video. Today we're going to be talking about a build as old as time itself, the Proxy 2 Barracks Bunker Rush versus Zerg. Now right off the bat, even though this is a very old sort of classic build that even goes back to the very beginning days of Brood War, I will say that there are a ton of little variations that we can talk about of this build. Even though it's very simple and at the end of the day it's just a bunker rush where you're trying to kill the Zergs natural, there are a ton of little intricate things you can do. So right out the gate, we have to talk about when to send the SCVs. Now there are really <clears throat> two schools of thought to this. S do what I did, which is send it after the first depot and that means that they're both going to arrive right as you get the money to proxy two barracks and you'll be able to make SCVs while your SCVs travel. In other words, you don't have to cut workers. And that's the more economic version. The other version is send the SCVs out right at the beginning of the game and pretty much cut workers as hard as you, you want. You know, I'm not going to go into every single little option, obviously. You cannot even make workers at all, like it's a six pool from the very beginning days of Wings of Liberty. And you want to just absolutely get that depot as quick as possible, rush out the two racks, maybe even you cut workers so you can make double bunker. Like there are a ton of different little variations, but we're going to just sort of paint in broader strokes here. And just note that the two variations are economic focus two barracks where you plan to use the two barracks to get ahead and you're really going to open gasless and plan to expand and really have an expansion building by the time that it's make or break time for the zerg natural that's what i do in this game and i think that's the better way to play two racks or there's the super cutthroat way that i spoke about earlier where you cut drones and maybe you plan on adding a couple more racks producing and then doing a big all-in or really the point is, is that no matter how you do it, it's going to involve cutting SCVs and it's probably going to end in doing a big all-in that involves pulling all your boys and just trying to kill the Zerg. And if you want to get your ladder games done in four and a half minutes every single time, maybe you play that way. But considering that you can play this macro style where you get the three depots before you even produce a marine and you get full saturation, you can still all in off of this opening, but if you do the super cutthroat opening, your attack will hit a little quicker. So this is the economic opening, and instead of saying you need to make a depot at this number, and you need to make barracks at this number, I just, sort of like day nine, I like to think of it more in phases. I think that's vastly superior to looking at build orders numbers wise, because he pointed out, StarCraft games aren't always so linear. If something goes wrong in the early game, your opponent does something weird, you have to adjust. So instead of just knowing, yes, depot here at this supply, two barracks here at this supply, it's better to know you make your normal SCV, your normal depot, and then send your proxy SCVs out right as that happens, and then you really worry about just getting those SCVs building up a wall while the barracks go up. Now, of course, you don't want to try to make all this crap over here in your main so early that it delays these barracks. Having the SCVs starting to build the racks when this depot finishes across the map is key. You don't want to delay that at all. So now we talk about placement briefly. Very safely, you can always just place proxy barracks at your opponent's third. Now, frequently on maps, there are third bases that what I like to call Catalina third bases, where essentially, named after the map Catalina, not the Catalina wine mix or anything, your main is a big plateau, and the third base is sort of directly below this cliff that is the plateau of your main base. Now, frequently, if the third base is attackable, Terran will pressure it and then pick up into Medivax and just drop your main so it can be rough for Zerg. But the point here, in the terms of two racks, is that the Zerg pretty much is always going to be sending their first few overlords in some sort of path from their main to near your main or natural or third. So if we just sort of look at how those paths would go, they all sort of, if just imagine these are lines, just watch my cursor here on the mini map. 
they're all going to pass through this area, this third base, whether we go to the main or whether we go to the third or whether we go to the natural. It, it all sort of passes through right here. So if you want to proxy racks at a third, make sure you do it at the off third that is often taken as a fourth. So as the proxy barracks finish, you want to produce double marine and then run up and get your barracks started. A big part of bunker rush is getting that barracks started right before his hatchery comes up because it's going to finish. He's going to see the building bunker and he's not going to have his pool finished and he's certainly not going to have had the several seconds it takes for Zerglings to make. Another key is this overlord that Zerg has to make at 19 supply. Frequently they will send it sort of in harm's way and if you can kill it it's massive because it gives you another 30 seconds to sort of knock on the doors of this hatchery and as it stands if everything goes right for the Zerg they're going to have to let a thousand HP be shaved off this 1500 HP structure and then move everything down at once to defend it. And at Zerg players, you don't want to just sort of throw your first six Zerglings into the first bunker. You want to mass up, let your queens and spines build, make mass ling, don't get supply blocked, and then when this hatch gets relatively low, you move all your shit down at once and do one big break. Never as Zerg versus Terran do you want to just make stuff versus an attack that you don't have to defend at that moment and send that first wave of made stuff in to die. A big part of Zerg is making as much stuff as possible while you're being attacked and delaying as much as possible and then once you're finally forced to defend you have an overwhelming force. You don't want to get in the habit as Zerg of oh well I'm being attacked and even if it's think about it if it's just three marines with no stem they're gonna take a long time to kill a hatch. So, obviously your mining gets shut down and you never want to lose this natural, but as Zerg, you don't want to get in the mindset of, oh my god, I have to defend right now, I've only lost 300 HP. No, you want to mass up and only defend when you absolutely have to. So as far as bunker placement goes, we definitely want to have one somewhere that threatens the natural. And potentially you want to have at least part of the bunker sort of touching something so the zerglings can't get a surround and you also want to potentially have a sort of safe spot the SCVs can hide and repair. Now another thing to note is do we build another bunker and if so where? Two options here again passive or aggressive. Passive option is somewhere down here. Really you want the second bunker to be in range of the other bunker so if they rush it they get nailed from wherever the second one is and potentially your units from the first bunker, if the first one dies, can retreat into the second one. Or you can do super cutthroat and make an aggressive one. Now often, if you do that, you, ought, you want the first one and the second one to touch, whether you do the passive or aggressive opening. Now since I did the macro opener of the two racks aggressive bunker rush proxy play, I really want this hatch to die no matter what. If it dies, I'm ahead. I'm not really relying on killing a bunch of drones or anything. So we see here that the SCVs are going to move out and the first bunker is going to be built in a position that threatens the hatch. The second bunker is going to be built in a contingency position that shields the first bunker. Notice I'm built in orbital command as soon as possible. That's because mules are so good. So here we go. The first bunker goes down. Now let's watch the Zerg's reaction. It's very important to note. Let's see how, okay, right there he knows. Now this is very normal as Zerg. Every Zerg knows this moment. They know this feeling. They're watching their natural base when it is about to pop. And then when it pops, they see a bunker about halfway built. Now let's just watch from the Zerg position. As from Terran, I'm just building bunkers and I'm rallying my Marines up to my initial bunker and because I've already built three depots, I don't have to worry about that crap. So the Zerg builds a bunker and a bandling nest. These are two common responses, and he sort of peeks and sees what's going on, sees the second bunker, but there he makes a big mistake. He's focusing on building spine crawlers. He loses an overlord. Thankfully, it was an extra overlord and not the initial one. There he loses a link. Now I'm gonna pause briefly here. It might sound like I'm nitpicking, but because in StarCraft 2 the game is not just a sort of rush-centric 
everyone just make as much attacking units as possible as quickly as possible and attack each other it's not really like that even though t the meta recently has sort of shifted where Terran players are doing a lot of proxies and that's part of why I am doing this video because proxy play is getting so popular the game isn't designed to be all around this very early game so that means that every single unit counts in the early game it matters a ton because Zerg, their larva is limited. The income for both players is limited. Speaking of income, notice that I've built two bunkers. I'm continuously building Marines. And I even have one queued up at each barracks. And I don't have a shortage of money. I have a surplus of money. So what do I do? I lower one depot, go out there, and I'm going to build a new expansion. And of course, I still have perfect saturation. So this is the point where you sort of want to either make more barracks and all in or get ready to pull the boys because you're, you're floating a lot of money so you want to make a decision here. Now at this point as I move my desk around I think that I can kill this base so I just want to expand to get more ahead. So I've already killed an SCV or excuse me I've already killed a Link. And I, what I want to do is every single marine on the map needs to be in position where it's focusing this hatch. Because getting as much HP off this hatchery as quickly as possible is extremely important. We have six marines here. Think about if it was just four and two of the marines were down here, it would be way worse. Because what's going on? Right at this time, 305, the Zerg is going to have their spines finish. They're going to have their queen ready. This guy likes to go Banelings, which isn't terrible, but it, that, I think if you go Banelings, you're giving this up. Because this second spine's just finishing. <clears throat> it's at 381 HP, and more Marines are coming. Now, you could argue that both of my SCVs should have been attacking, because it was a little more DPS, even though it was marginal. And I'll give you that one. Maybe they should have been, but this is the more conservative play. Having the SCVs tucked around the bunkers because very frequently what happens the zerg will run down and try to defend this and if you're not perfectly ready because the scvs have to be in melee range depending on the map especially you can get cut off so it's more safe to have an scv tucked behind here because i find that if i'm just more cautious with my scvs and i'm not using them for the peasley melee attack although that's very good in the extreme early game if I'm very conservative with my SCVs and don't lose them, it means that frequently they will come up big in situations where I just need a little bit of repair action to barely hold one of my bunkers and devastate the Zerg. I find that I'm no Korean pro gamer, and if I get too focused on doing something at home, or I get supply blocked and have to look at home, and I screw up and lose my SCVs ac across the map, it can sort of cost me the game in the sense that the Zerg will then be able to break my bunkers eventually. So I'm very safe with these. A very good player could be more aggressive with them, but I opted to be more safe. So here the Zerg, he's going to try to run down, but there's just too much firepower here. And notice that I did a shift command. Of course, shift lets you queue up multiple things to essentially say, kill that hatch, and as soon as you do, run in the bunkers. Because I knew the Zerg was going to come down. Even if the hatch was going to die, he was going to try to come down. So he does just that, and at this point, he's sort of saying, well, can I retake my base? I have a few bands and links, but does he have speed? No, he doesn't. He sacrificed getting super fast bands. And because the creep is receding, because there's no hatchery to go off of, he does this weird thing where he's like, well shit, I, I want to try to move my spines in a better position. And then he just sort of tr tries to make the hatch a little bit off kilter, because he just needs creep, and then he says, okay crap, I'll cancel it. I'll try to maybe run the spine to replant, but I can't, it's not fast enough. So what does he do now? He's like, well, I guess I have to try to break out. I'm super behind, no lair tech, virtually no drones. If we look at income, I'm beating him by almost 10. He has the bandling nest, but no speed. He has to break out. There's no creep to go off of. And he's going to try to run in with bands. So he breaks one bunker and kills about half my marines. Thankfully for him, I don't have high ground vision anymore. So he's thinking, okay, well, maybe I can expand. And what he wants to do is get the hatcheries going, get the expansions going. 
and try to t tech up into a macro game, but he can't really do that. That's what really every Zerg is going to try to go for, except for your rare cheesy Zerg. But when you put them in this position, you sort of make them feel like a caged animal, and they very often times sort of are like, well, I can't do anything off of one base, I'm so behind, I just want to break out and try to play a normal game. This guy doesn't have Ling Speed, he doesn't have Lair, and he's invested into two spines. So he's not really in a position to say, okay, well I can kill you, because so slow Zerglings are terrible, they're really bad. I'm almost certainly going to have at least one thing up behind a wall and at home. But regardless of whether he wants to all in and attack me or just expand, he has to kill the bunkers. Man, my mouse has been really screwing up lately with these lateral movements. Anyway. So he kills that bunker and says, well shoot, I need to kill the other. I try to target fire the Banes, but I'm not perfect. And here we see the slow links. They die very quickly when they're being attacked by six Marines. And the bunker lives. The drone sort of peeks down there and says, oh shit, okay, it had about 60 HP. And I'm continuing to put pressure on the Zerg. I always want high ground vision, so another bunker starts up. This means that the one on this low ground is always threatening about this area, which really sucks for the Zerg, because he thinks that I'm going to come up here. And look, he's trying to kill this upwards top side bunker on the high ground, and I run Marines in there in the knack of time, nick of time, and he just leaves. So that's how to execute the two racks play. Not every one of your games is going to go as simply as this one, but crap, even if he broke out here, I was still very far ahead with this base being down and being at 29 workers. So I pumped Marines the whole time. Notice I made a contingency bunker just in case. I was sort of worried he was making a ton of lings and he was just going to try to run across the map. So I wanted to sort of persuade him not to do that and I didn't have the money to sort of block off his full ramp. So I just made another bunker to be cute. Theoretically, if this game went two minutes longer and this happened where he broke out and then instead of running down onto the low ground like an idiot and failing to break this bottom bunker, I could see him just trying to m mass more lings and make another big swell. I could have potentially lifted these barracks and then sort of drop them down to wall him in from the low ground. That's always a cute little option you can do if someone's trying to baneling you. But it's pretty hard to pull off because of the flight distance versus the baneling build time. So I was just used this video to talk about two racks and verbally it hasn't been very clean. But like two racks, sort of a down and dirty cast. It's very important that you don't get supply blocked when you do this build, by the way. It can just be devastating. That's why I opted for the noob-friendly three depots at the top of the ramp before you can even build a marine. Subscribe, like, comment, favorite. Easy.